Good morning. Welcome to Devotions for April 29th, 2020. Let's begin with prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We've been hearing that prayer this week and hearing about God, our shepherd. And I may have mentioned before that the fourth Sunday in Easter, which we are headed toward this Sunday, May 3rd, is uh, referred to unofficially, officially, I guess, as Good Shepherd Sunday. It is when we have the reading of Jesus the Good Shepherd from John and the 23rd Psalm, which is what I'm going to share with you right now. Uh, I know many of us have memorized the 23rd Psalm over the years and usually just a little bit differently than someone else. So you can follow along with me. You can say it on your own, read it on your own if you'd prefer. This is from the New Revised Standard Version if you'd like to follow with that. Psalm 23. The Divine Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right pathways for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What can I say? It's the 23rd Psalm. It's great. Everyone finds something in it. There's so many things, but there are a few things, of course, I can say. And one that I want to say, hopefully, is an antidote to uh, what could be a negative part of this. This is a psalm of comfort. This is a psalm... Uh, written, we, uh, we understand by David, that says that God is going to be with us, take care of us all of our lives and even beyond. And so the part that I want to offer as an antidote is from verse five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So first of all, preparing a table means God is, is feeding us, is caring for us even beyond just uh, what is absolutely necessary, but actually uh, a celebration style, a banquet, something wonderful. We hear that with anointing my head with oil and my cup overflows. But that peace in between, in the presence of my enemies, we need to make sure that we understand that, especially throughout the Psalms, and really, as we get down to it, throughout the Bible, the only enemy we have is Satan. Evil, the devil, whatever you want to call it, all of that which is bad, that's the only enemy we really have. Now, you or I might think of people that we've had problems with, individuals, as enemies. We might have had people who have really caused things to be difficult in our lives. We may have caused things to be difficult in other people's lives as well. But when we think of enemies, if I say to you, who is your enemy? If you're thinking of a person, if you're thinking of a group of people, if you're thinking of a, um, a, like I said, groups could be political parties, could be countries, could be uh, other religions, anything like that. That's not what this is about. Enemy is the one who wants to do you the worst evil, and that's got to be the evil one, the complete opposite of God. And that is who God is setting a table for before, for you in front of this enemy, right? In the presence of my enemies. This is God holding up God's honor and saying, I'm going to take care of my people no matter what. No matter what they do, I'm going to continue to love and take care of them. So I want you to enjoy this psalm of comfort uh, for what it is, as a comfort of God and reminding us that we don't get any excuses here from God to be hateful towards people, to consider other people our enemies. God asks us to love and forgive everyone. And the idea of your table being set in the presence of your enemies is to say that the evil one can never 
take over. God is always the one who is in charge. And for our prayers today, we continue with open prayers that will, um, <clears throat> excuse me, give you the opportunity to finish each of the thoughts. Let us pray. We bring you our prayers, dear Lord, and we thank you for We pray for our concerns for this world and for our nation. We pray for the concerns of our community. We lift our faith communities to you in prayer. We pray for our friends and our families, for those dealing with difficulty and those celebrating with joy. We bring before you those who may or may not be known to us, but for whom we pray today for healing, strength, and comfort, especially Nancy, Greg, Diane, Rod and Laura, Kathy, Tom, Libby, Christopher, Doug, Dan, Dennis, Tim, Dale, Rusty, Don, Bob, all those working in the healthcare field now, including Cindy, Kathy, Tammy, Yata, Bob, Kathy, Kyla, Aaron, Lauren, and Sarah. All this we bring to you in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Stay home in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Well, I don't know if you heard a little winding and a little clicking around, but I've got a friend here. I've shown her before and I'll show her again. And apparently it's time for her to go outside. Velvet. Where are you? Hello. She says, let me out, Mom. That's what I'm going to do. Hope you have a great day. Take care and God bless.